The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 6 verses 24 to 35. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do, that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, Truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They say to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Hello again, and welcome back to Hat, happy active town Kobe. You can't see, but behind you, behind the camera there is the highway that goes across to Osaka. And behind me we have some of the apartment blocks and the, the kind of place that used to be a canal. And it's uh, just peaceful now. And it's lovely, you know, and this, this is part of the city of Kobe that is really beautiful. Um, and it's one of the reasons that I love living here. And there are many reasons that I like living in Kobe. I don't like the heat it's a bit hot and sticky um, but I love living here because it's it's not too big and it's not too small it's, it's close to the mountains and it's also close to the sea um, it's a very cosmopolitan place but also there's another reason why I love living here and that's because it's a city which has a huge bread culture and apparently it was the German traders who brought that with them when they arrived Danke schön to them. But anyway, living in a city that has so many bakeries in such a short geographical space is a real pleasure. And this morning I went out and I picked up just within a few minutes walk of the mission all these different kinds of bread. I've got a bagel, and it's got chocolate inside, I've got a sausage brioche, I have the standard French baguette, I've got a fig bread there, I've got something that I love that's probably not so good for me, croissant. And I've also bought some um, chocopan, a kind of sandwich bread I suppose they call that. People queue for hours at this store, that has a funny name, they, they store for, queue for hours to buy that bread. But sometimes I think that I probably take it for granted that I can walk into any bakery within, you know, short distance of where I live and I will find on the shelves bread that I want of various shapes of sizes and various tastes and maybe this variety or this availability means that sometimes I can forget that bread in its simplest form is a staple food for many and it can be difficult to understand its importance as such unless we seriously consider those who don't have enough. A simple loaf of bread, something which perhaps I don't give a second thought to, in some parts of the world that can mean life itself. And that is exactly what Jesus wanted to emphasize in today's reading. Well it's exactly what he wanted to emphasize over the next few weeks actually because we have the same thread for the next couple of Sundays. And he wanted to emphasize that because it is important. A bread that means life. A bread that brings life. But it's not made of flour. 
Now, just a few weeks back, we heard the account of the feeding of the 5,000, what, maybe it was 10,000 or 12,000, but we heard that story when Jesus provided what the people needed when they needed it. And today's Gospel continues that story. So let's see what happened. We find that same crowd having stalked Jesus from one side of the lake to the other. And the reason? Because for them, having been given one free meal, they were looking for more. And of course Jesus knows that. He's not stupid and he says it to them straight. He says, you guys are only here because I gave you those fish sandwiches, not because you saw what I did. It was not the miracles that brought you to me, it was because you had your fill of my lunch. And then he goes on and says, you need to be careful not to spend your time, not to spend your lives seeking out the wrong things for the wrong reasons. Don't work for food that perishes, but work for that which brings eternal life. Because Jesus knew that that crowd were hungry for more than just food. He knew that, that deep inside them, they were empty. Not just that their stomachs were rumbling, but because they were looking for that deeper connection with God. And Jesus knew that that was something that could not be satisfied by food or by anything. And he wanted them to realise that too. To satisfy that hunger for God, Jesus says, you must receive the bread that comes down from heaven. Well, that was it. That confused the crowd no end. So then Jesus goes back into the annals of history and he reminds them of an episode from long ago. He talks about the experience of the Israelites, who, when they were facing starvation in the desert, they received manna, bread from heaven, something which sustained them throughout their journey. And then he stressed that, no, it wasn't Moses who did that. It wasn't Moses who conjured up magically bread to feed everybody. It was God who provided that for his people. It is only God who can provide the sustenance that we need. That is the message, that simple message that Jesus wanted to get across to the crowd who had chased him, looking for a good meal. And that is the message that he wants to get across to us, reading this gospel in 2021 as well. It is only God who gives life to our world. It is only God who provides what we need to sustain us as we face our daily and our difficult lives. But what do we need? I think we need encouragement, comfort, power, patience, support, love. The list goes on. I'm sure you can think of so many other things that we need to help us get through the days that we face and the difficult times we have. And I'm sure that you've had days when you need some of those things. Maybe you've had these days when you need a lot of those things. And Jesus tells us today that the only way we can get it, as he says in the last line of the gospel we heard just now, is by coming to God, by being in a relationship with God. And that means that, like any relationship, we share things. We tell God about our problems, about our worries, about things which upset us or things which excite us. We tell God about the challenges that we are facing, but also we listen for his guidance. When we have decisions to make, we listen for his reassurance when we feel uncertain. We listen for his warmth when we feel lonely. And through all of that, we should be able to gain the strength that we need to live in this world with everything that it throws at us. The bread of heaven that gives life to this world is not some kind of toast, or even toast that has Jesus' face imprinted on it. No, 
It's a life spent in relationship with our Heavenly Father, which will provide us with everything we need to face everything we do. All of these are bread, but what are they really? Well, flour, water, a little salt or butter, maybe some sugar perhaps, and something else is needed to add to that mix. Something else is needed to bring that mixture to life, isn't it? Yeast. And we call yeast a leavening agent because it makes something rise. And that comes from the root word, or from the same root word as enliven, which means to bring life. And what more perfect image can we have of God than that? Something, somebody, who brings life. So when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he doesn't mean that he is flaky and full of calories, like my croissant, nor that he is long and crispy, like my baguette. He is not soft and smooth, like this sandwich bread, nor meaty, like my sausage brioche. He is not nutty or a bit fruity, like my fig bread. Neither is he missing something, like my bagel. No, Jesus Christ is our Lord, who enlivens our faith and gives us life through the relationship that we have with him. And for all of this delicious bread that I have, even if I eat it all, at some stage, I will probably feel hungry again. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but at some time, I will feel hungry again. And today, Jesus tells us that if we bring ourselves into a loving, living relationship with him, he promises to feed us and to nourish us so much that we will never go hungry again. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, bread of heaven, as we come to you, feed us until we want no more. In your name, Amen. <laughs>